After a lot of speculation, new information from SpaceX and Elon himself has given us a much better idea of the current state and future of Stage Zero. It's now been over a week since Starship lifted off for the first time and caused some significant damage to the pad. This being said, the company seems confident that within a short period of time, a few systems will be in place to properly withstand the power of Starship. Some of the new information includes more details on the steel plate and water deluge system, why they won't be constructing a flame trench, the state of the tower, and plans for the orbital tank farm, just to name a few. All of which are necessary in order for Starship to continue testing and frequent launches to become a viable future. The first launch of Starship was as much of a test of the rocket itself as the infrastructure and different systems on the launch pad. With this new information, SpaceX has a lot of work ahead of them, as they work to prepare everything for the next attempt. Here I'll go more in depth into the new pad details, Elon's thoughts on the future of Stage Zero, what to expect in the coming weeks, and more. By now, many of us have seen the aftermath at Stage Zero. Starship lifted off and destroyed the special heat-resistant fondag concrete below it, creating a trench. The exhaust then proceeded to shoot this destroyed concrete and debris hundreds of meters in every direction, damaging nearby infrastructure such as the propellant tank farm, the orbital launch mount, etc. While images of the pad in Stage Zero don't look the best, Elon doesn't seem to be very concerned at all and still has some very ambitious timelines in mind. Just a few days ago, Musk was interviewed by a few different members within the community and spoke a lot about the pad. He started off by saying, I'm glad to report that the pad damage is actually quite small and should be repaired quickly. From a pad standpoint, we are probably ready to launch in six to eight weeks, he said. This timeline that Elon is talking about has many people skeptical if the repairs are possible in such a short period of time. He also pointed out that Starship generated a rock tornado under Super Heavy during liftoff, but SpaceX does not see evidence that the rock tornado actually damaged engines or heat shields in a material way. May have happened, but we have not seen evidence of that, he said. Soon after this, he began talking about the solution and specific pad changes that we can expect to see in the next few weeks. First, he mentioned, we're going to be putting down a lot of steel, under the launch tower before the next Starship flight. Debris was really just basically sand and rock, so it's not toxic at all, it's just like a sandstorm, essentially, but we don't want to do that again. We certainly didn't expect to destroy the concrete under the launch pad, he said. He then made comments on how the trench may have formed by highlighting, Speculating, but one of the more plausible explanations is that we may have compressed the sand underneath the concrete to such a degree that the concrete effectively bent and then cracked, which is a leading theory. When asked about why they want to use steel plates instead of a flame trench, he said, Well, you could do it either way, and there are different schools of thought there. What's important is that whatever the flame is hitting is regeneratively and evaporatively cooled. So what you'll see is quite a large steam cloud, but not a dust cloud. The reason for going with a steel plate instead of a flame trench is that for payloads in the rocket, the worst acoustic environment doesn't matter to the payload since it's about 120 meters or 400 feet away. It can be done either way, but this is one way that we are confident about. We're going to extend the steel just out beyond the rocket to make sure we don't dig up concrete elsewhere. We will also connect the load of the massive steel sandwich underneath the launch pad into the launch mount legs, so it can take that load tension as well as compression. You'll see it come together in the next month or so. Musk finished with two final comments saying, The tower itself is in good shape. We see no meaningful damage to the tower even though they got hit with some pretty big chunks of concrete. We are also going to be replacing a bunch of the tanks in the tank farm, but these are tanks that we wanted to replace anyway. Not only did we learn more about the pad, but Elon also shared some information on what caused the eventual failure of Starship. He first pointed out that there were three engines that we chose not to start, so that's why the super heavy booster lifted off with 30 engines, which is the minimum number of engines. The three engines didn't explode, but just were not healthy enough to bring them to full thrust, so they were shut down. He continued by saying, at T plus 27 seconds, SpaceX lost communications due to some kind of energy event, and some kind of explosion happened to knock out the heat shields of engine 17, 18, 19, or 20. Rocket kept going through T plus 62 seconds with the engines continuing to run. Lost thrust vector control at T plus 85 seconds. One of the biggest problems during the launch that he talked about during the interview was delays with the AFTS system. Specifically, he said, the longest item on that is probably requalification of the flight termination system. It took way too long to rupture the tanks. Time for AFTS to kick in was pretty long, about 40 seconds-ish. The AFTS makes decisions using redundant computers that track the launch vehicle using global positioning system and inertial navigation systems, along with configurable software-based rules. If a rocket goes off course, potentially endangering the public, the AFTS would issue a command to terminate the flight. This is what happened on the first launch of Starship, but later than the company had hoped. Elon was quoted saying, got pretty close to stage separation. If we had maintained thrust vector control and throttled up, which we should have, then we would have made it to staging. 
Our goal for the next flight is to make it to staging and hopefully succeed. My expectation for the next flight would be to reach orbit. The next flight profile will be a repeat of the one we just saw. He then said, at the end of the day, the goal of these missions is just information. Like, we don't have any payload or anything, it's just to learn as much as possible. He believes that there was probably an 80% probability of reaching orbit with Starship this year, and close to 100% chance of reaching orbit within 12 months. We even slowed down Raptor engine production, because we've got more Raptors than we know what to do with, he commented. He finished by making a few comments on what to expect for the next flight. First, he pointed out, for the next flight, we're going to start the engines faster and get off the pad faster. From engine start to moving Starship was around 5 seconds, which is a really long time to be blasting the pad. Going to try and cut that time in half. It was actually good to get this vehicle off the ground because we made so many improvements in Super Heavy Booster 9 and beyond. Really just needed to fly this vehicle and then move on to the much improved booster. The big thing for the next Starship launch is ensuring that we don't lose thrust vector control with Booster 9. SpaceX has yet to make a final decision on which Starship prototype and Super Heavy Booster will fly the next launch, he said. This was the main information provided by Elon during the recent interview. It helps give a lot of insight into what exactly they are planning and some of the specific aspects of the launch that did not go to plan. We can expect another update from him in a few weeks based on what he said. By then, according to his timeline, the pad should be well under construction and not extremely far from completion. This being said, Elon is known for very ambitious timelines that usually take a bit longer. If the pad and various infrastructure at stage zero is completed in only two months, that would be very impressive. However, it's more likely that this will take longer. On the bright side, it sounds like the tower is in great shape and they shouldn't have to replace the orbital launch mount. This is a very big deal, as a new mount would take a significant amount of time to replace and get ready for the next attempt. The OLM isn't just a metal stand, but a complex system filled to the brim with technology, clamps, plumbing, and other important features. As for the orbital tank farm, as mentioned by Musk, they were planning to replace some of them anyway. In the past, there has been a few different issues with this propellant farm that the company has had to deal with. Standing at 120 meters tall with a 9 meter diameter and a payload capacity between 100 and 150 tons fully reusable, Starship is unlike anything we've seen in the past. This unique design and innovation will be very fun to keep up with in the future, something to keep an eye on in the coming months. SpaceX, and Elon in particular, just gave a bunch of new information on exactly what the plan is at stage zero. Overall, he's very optimistic about the damage and future of the program. In the near future, we can expect the trench to be filled, and then the installation of a water-cooled steel plate that stretches between each of the orbital launch mount supports. We will have to wait and see how it progresses, and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.